Uh, what is architecture? Well, if I uh, rely on the four or five people you have noted here, uh, there's not a common agreement. And uh, it's either, some, some, some are either silly or funny or kind of shrewd questions like architecture is yes or architecture is um, success. <coughs> and it's, that's probably the one that comes closer to, to uh, um, the more enigmatic <coughs> answer. Architecture is enigmatic. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a moving subject. It changes all the time. So it's a bit odd. It's, an, it's a bit, uh, let me put it this way. If you ask, ask a doctor what is medicine, he or she would be probably relatively uh, clear about what it is. If you ask a, a construction engineer, uh, they will say, well, it's to make things stand up. Architecture is much more enigmatic because it's in the eye of the beholder. I used to say for years architecture is built thought. Uh, but you know, uh, some people like to make the separation between building and architecture. It's a kind of a feat operation that's done by a, a select group of people that think highly of themselves. And I'm skeptical about all of that. I'm fine with that architecture remains an enigmatic uh, su subject. Uh, I don't think that it's, uh, th that is in, in fact useful because that allows all of these guys to have their own perception, you know. One person thinks that it's, it's an expression of culture, which it probably is. And another, another person thinks that, uh, you know, it's uh, like um, some, some genius that uh, finds solutions to, the, to no problems. You know, all of that is uh, amusing, but partic not particularly useful. Uh, but it allows, of course, um, a lot of ideologies to kind of uh, be constructed. And uh, I know I have many friends who will are very clear about that this is architecture and that is not architecture. One old friend, Peter Eisenman, knows that very clearly what is architecture. When he thinks there is no architecture, he gets irritated and says, this is not architecture. I guess I'm much more skeptical about all of this. Uh, you know, it's sort of a bit like an amusement park where everybody's doing their, their thing, and, and it's, it's often a bit childish. When in fact, uh, we have enormous problems there millions and millions of people who are, have no right to, 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 to house and, and shelter. And those are the real issues in, the, in our world. And there we can have a role to play that's very serious and very important. Um, the more effete version of it uh, functions best when there are lots of money or when there is no money. Uh, when people can fantasize about it and draw rather than build. But, uh, you know, I think we are facing an enormously complex future. We thought that the 21st century wouldn't have any wars, only have the conflicts. We have about 450 wars going on as we speak. Uh, the, the gap between the rich and poor is growing at an enormous pace. pace. Uh, and in countries like uh, Austria or in Germany, the biggest problem is too many immigrants, you know. When in, if you go to, to Africa or there's an enormous amount of money in Africa and yet there's an enormous amount of poverty. The same goes on in Latin America. And in the US we have a, a, an increasingly uh, growing, growing group of, of poor people that uh, have live, live in very poor housing conditions. So those are the big issues. That's why, in, in, my, in, in my view, um, 
architecture has to be a subcategory of, the, of urbanism and that the real issue is uh, urbanization and the enormous impact that it has had on the environment. The buildings are, in some sense, not as benign as they look. They produce a lot of uh, uh, off, off gases that are not good for us. And we, have, we are facing a much, much more complex problem with air weak than uh, architecture with its uh, sort of um, um, charming little uh, uh, games is rather uninteresting. Okay, so you've already started to answer what architects can do. It can uh, address these issues you've just mentioned, right? Well, uh, they can help. Because, uh, you know, if you look at Brasilia, which was a, uh, there it was a very powerful uh, president, a very smart architect, and a very smart planner. They produced Brasilia. So, the, you have to have at least somebody very powerful. You have to be able to amass enough capital to do things. So, I mean, it's a very complex business. The architects play, play a, a, a significant, but uh, uh, they are by themselves, they're useless. They have to have all those, uh, you know. I was involved with the, with the planning of a huge laboratory. We had 240 consultants in the room at the first meeting. That's what modern architecture is about. You can ask any of these people, you know, from Wolf to to Saha or wherever, uh, that's, that's the reality. It become extremely complex. And uh, with that we still uh, talk about singular architects uh, instead of teams um, is, is uh, convenient, but not a real reflection of what goes on. And those are the complex problems. Um, so, uh, what else? Um, how do you position yourself in the discourse of architecture? Well, I have an extremely privileged position. Uh, I'm a senior professor with a nice cushy chair. And uh, uh, my um, luxury is that can, I can write about anything that comes my way that interests me. So I try to write about architecture when I think that it's interesting and, and useful and powerful. Uh, I can also write about cities, which I've done extensively. And I uh, try to educate myself all the time about more and more complicated issues around urbanism. Uh, but, I, but I basically write about things that I feel that I have some kind of control over. And I am, uh, I try to be humble about it because I know that we, nobody knows everything and I certainly don't and uh, that makes me uh, you know a humble servant in the in the realm of uh, urbanistic thought is there maybe a kind of set of ideas uh, around which you're writing or maybe also your design uh, revolves or? absolutely <coughs> I have become increasingly convinced that for me uh, Philosophy is, is uh, the most um, uh, important, the, the question of being, particularly ontology, is particularly useful for me, from, for my way of thinking, uh, thinking about urbanism. Because we are in a crucial moment, uh, in, in my view, of uh, reflecting on who we are as human beings and what we do with the world that surrounds us. And that requires uh, lofty thoughts and uh, practical solutions. I, I have relied on many fields from, from sociology to anthropology and, and uh, much less the technical aspect, although I was trained as an engineer. Um, but for me, philosophy is that which uh, animates me more than anything else. In fact, I, I probably... Uh, I don't read architects' view about architecture very often anymore. Because uh, it's not so much that, that, um, that it's uninteresting, 
but it's often self-serving and therefore not in some sense objective enough for my taste. Um, uh, I, I, I'm a practical person in other words, I like to read theoretical things and, and then uh, try to make use of it by talking practically about the world. I, I do believe that uh, practical philosophy is really the most important thing we have. That we, we that is a kind of um, an ontological practice that where ethics comes in and where we have we have to be intersubjective and we have to think about others. We can't be so solipsistic and in involving ourselves as many architects have been trained to do and have gotten away with it. We need to be more generous about others and other point of views and. Uh, that is something that seems to me to be the, 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 big, the big issue today. That we have to realize that it's not my city, it's our city, it's not my planet, it's our planet. And that those ours are not just us, but the trees and the birds and all the stuff. You know, uh, It might be silly to, to, to try to protect the owls when you drill for oil, but it's a question that's not trivial. And um, do you have a preferred design method? Uh, you know, I am. Um, I I often start with. Uh, you know, I'm not talking about furniture, which is probably not that far or different. I often start uh, with a certain topology. <clears throat> For example, a subject like chair. And uh, I then um, look at analogies. I do anal uh, analogical explorations of uh, minimal to maximal chairs. And I, I find uh, a way of kind of uh, making a sort of a matrix or a, or a network of share possibilities. And then I begin to take the chair out in the world and look, and look for other uh, analogies or other uh, similarities and that's how I begin to, 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 work, to, to work on it. Because I, I'm interested in, just as architecture is enigmatic, I'm interested in enigmatic objects. Objects are by their very nature enigmatic, but I like to make them more enigmatic while simultaneously making them practical. So it's often a very complex enterprise. Uh, but I'm inspired almost uh, solely by, by, uh, by writers, not necessarily philosophers, but uh, people like uh, Borges and, uh, and Beckett, uh, many of the absurdists, uh, and, uh, and um, going back all the way to the, the Russians uh, with their plium or nostranienia, making strange, making strange I think is is completely appropriate in a world that's very strange. So uh, if that's a design method, so be it.